The BBC is on the edge of a crisis that could make the Philip Schofield saga look like a mere footnote in broadcasting history. The mother of this teenager, allegedly paid by a BBC star for explicit pornographic pictures, we're told pleaded with the organisation on May the 19th to take this presenter off air and to stop him doing what could be eventually found to be by police a vile crime. The poor teenager in question may have been 17, but under the Protection of Children Act 1978, it is an offence to make, distribute, possess or show any indecent images of anyone under 18, even with consent. It's also a criminal offence to ask a child under 18 to send a sexual image of themselves. Causing or inciting sexual exploitation of a child carries a maximum penalty of 14 years in prison. So whatever show this presenter is famous for, his next appearance could be on another BBC programme, Crime Watch. Had the BBC learnt nothing from the horrors of the Jimmy Savile scandal, arguably Britain's worst paedophile, some of whose horrific crimes were committed on BBC property, and his status as a BBC star gave him the power and authority to evade justice for so long. The BBC Newsnight show at the time were going to run a troubling investigation about Savile's behaviour, but it was pulled by the broadcaster because they were planning a tribute to the bejeweled tracksuit-wearing monster. At the time, like the Roman Catholic Church and the paedophilia scandal that they suffered, the BBC moved fast to protect its own and turned a blind eye for years. Well, there are worrying echoes of Savile here, with the alleged star not only receiving his salary rather than facing suspension, which they've now finally done, but with the Mirror reporting that he partied with BBC bosses at a posh awards ceremony weeks after the complaint was made by this desperate mother. The Mail newspaper report the presenter is on a six-figure salary. Well, that's not surprising. They all are. The fact that this individual could find the eye-watering sum of £35,000 to fulfil his alleged sick fantasies shows how wildly overpaid some of these presenters are and how brazen, fearless and untouchable so many of them feel. The arrogance of a well-known BBC star allegedly exposing himself metaphorically and, we're told, literally, shows the growing chasm between ordinary people who have to follow the law and behave themselves and state-funded superstars who think they can do what the hell they like. I don't care about the presenter when his or her identity is revealed, it's career over. But the damage to the Beeb itself is potentially limitless. The behaviour of this presenter reflects the state broadcaster's lofty status as management, presenters and producers luxuriate in the ivory tower of Broadcasting House and TV Centre, bankrolled to the tune of billions by hard-pressed grannies who face jail if they don't cough up 159 quid. It's my view that the BBC must name this individual as a matter of urgency, because at the moment it's very unfair that innocent people in the public eye are being linked wrongly to this story. So let's confirm. I'm delighted to say that Rylan Clark, Jeremy Vine and Gary Lineker are entirely innocent, and it's a disgrace that they were dragged into this in the first place. The only thing those boys are guilty of is crimes against television. And let's not forget, at the heart of this is a human being, and I don't mean a privileged presenter popping one out on his iPad. I mean this teenager whose mother has said was using the money to fund a spiralling crack cocaine addiction. In a sense, we, as licence fee payers, bankrolled the purchase of those drugs. This mum told The Sun on Sunday the following... She said, we just wanted the BBC to tell him to stop. I've had three years of hell. The impact of this has been terrifying. In my mind, that man was supplying the crack. My child wouldn't have access to this money if it wasn't for him. If it goes on, then my child is going to wind up dead. My kid went from a happy-go-lucky youngster to a ghost-like crack addict in just three years. This is a scandal of epic proportions, which threatens not just the career of a famous unnamed star, but the future of our national broadcaster altogether. This pervert presenter will likely go on trial, but the BBC will face Judgment Day too. Now, look, let's get to what the Beeb have got to say on this. The Beeb takes 
any allegations seriously and we have robust internal processes in place to proactively deal with such allegations. They go on to say this is a complex and fast moving set of circumstances. The BBC is working as quickly as possible to establish the facts in order to properly inform appropriate next steps. It's important that these matters are handled fairly and with care. We can confirm a male member of staff has been suspended. I said he or she just to be on the safe side, but it looks like the BBC can confirm it is a male talent at the BBC. The BBC first became aware, they say, of a complaint in May. New allegations were put to us on Thursday of a different nature. And in addition to our own inquiries, we've also been in touch with external authorities in line with our protocols. Uh, listen, the bottom line is that we don't have the details, do we? We do not know the veracity of the claims being made by this mother. We do not know about the victim and their alleged or otherwise drug habit. We don't know whether this presenter, this star, is guilty or not. But the bottom line is that it raises major questions. It raises more questions than it answers. Should the Beeb reveal the name of this individual, particularly given that innocent folk like Gary Lineker and Jeremy Vine are being dragged into this very unfairly? What do you think? Mark at GBnews.com.